Hey folks, this is Ray from DCRamaker.com. I'm here with Cyclops' newest trainer. This is the new Hammer Smart Trainer. Um, it's their first completely electronically controlled uh, direct drive trainer. And what that means is that you don't have a rear wheel on here like you see. Uh, so in this case, you take the rear wheel off your bike and you go ahead and you pop it on this cassette. Now the hammer does not include a cassette, so that's something we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, but let's get to some of the specs. Uh, the first thing is it's going to go ahead and transmit across both AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart. So on the AMP Plus side, it'll give you AMP Plus FEC, uh, which is a trainer control system that all the apps have adopted since last fall. So that's Swift, Trainer Road, Kino Map. Basically, any app out there is going to use FEC. Uh, but they've also got Bluetooth Smart as well. So you can go to control it from a, you know, iDevice or an Android device. Um, anything that does Bluetooth Smart, you can control this dynamically there as well. Um, and then lastly, it'll go ahead and it'll transmit AMP Plus Power, uh, just as a generic AMP Plus Power channel. So if you have, for example, a uh, Garmin Edge 500 or something that's older that may not understand AMP Plus FEC, it'll transmit that too. Now, like most other smart trainers on the market today, or at least direct drive trainers, uh, they tend to be fairly heavy. Uh, so in this case, this weighs 46 pounds. Uh, that's compared to 47 for the Kicker uh, and 48 for the Tax Neo. Um, so all in the same, same ballpark there. The one difference between this and those trainers, though, is that it has this handle that's kind of weight balanced. So if you ever try picking up a Kicker, for example, you'll notice that it swings really kind of towards the bottom, uh, and the Tax Neo is equally awkward to pick up. Uh, in this case, when you pick it up, it's actually balanced so that as you grab by that point there, it doesn't swing all over the place. So it sounds minor, um, but you're moving it around, it's something that's actually kind of useful. Uh, the other thing is because you will be moving it around, they allow you to go ahead and fold these legs down here in. Um, so you can go ahead and there's two locks on both sides, they just slide in, they allow you to, to basically move it out of the way and kind of keep it stored. Um, at the same time, they've got this nifty little front uh, wheel base here. This isn't really to elevate the wheel, um, more is it just to keep it kind of stable and pointed forward. This actually folds up underneath there and locks in place. Uh, so it's just a minor little touch, but it's something that, you know, if you want to travel with it, it's, it's all there together. Um, and you could travel with this because it is under that 50 pound weight limit that's pretty common for most airlines to, to check something without an additional extra weight fee. From a compatibility standpoint, the hammer is compatible with uh, through axles from 130 to 148 millimeters. Uh, so it gives you a little more range than the Kicker does or the Neo does, uh, which tend to top out around 145-ish or so. Um, so a tiny bit more, that gives you more flexibility as well down the road if you change bikes or whatnot. Um, so you have that, that sort of flexibility there. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't include a cassette. Um, so you're gonna have to put your own cassette on it, whether or not it's a 10-speed or 11-speed, uh, that's up to you. Um, you'll go ahead and you'll just pop it on right with this cassette is on um, and again it's going to go on the trainer itself not on your bike so you know you know you have a cassette already on your wheel uh, once you go ahead and take this trainer off the wheel um, then or take your bike off the wheel uh, then at that point you still need a cassette on board there the next thing that's different about the uh, hammer compared to other trainers in the market today, other direct drive trainers, is really the flywheel. Uh, the flywheel is what makes the trainer realistic. It, what's, it makes it feel um, like it's out on the road. Uh, people a lot of times talk about a road feel. That really comes from the flywheel. And in most cases, the bigger the flywheel, the better. Uh, not always, but in most cases, that's the way it works. In the case of the hammer, it's got a 20 pound flywheel. Uh, that compares to a 12.5 pound flywheel in the kicker, uh, what's considered a virtual uh, flywheel in the Neo. Um, so, you know, Neo or Tax would uh, argue that their electronic or virtual flywheel um, is just as realistic as a legit flywheel or a physical flywheel. Um, and, you know, it's really kind of up for debate on road feel. I think, you know, all three of those trainers have really good road feel. Uh, so this just gives you a little bit more extra um, oomph when it comes to that, that road feel. Next is the sound aspect of it. Um, now, one of the main reasons people like direct drive trainers is the lower sound that you emit from the trainer itself. And the reason is that because it removes the rear wheel. Um, in most trainers, it's actually that rear tire coming in contact with the trainer uh, that basically causes the noise. And so in most cases, the, the faster you go um, is actually the higher the volume or the higher the, the decibels outputted. Uh, it really has nothing to do with wattage. It's purely just speed. Um, so you can shift gears and whatnot to change out on most trainers. In the case of the hammer, Cyclops have said they've rated at 64 decibels. Uh, that's compared to the kicker, which they've tested at 72 decibels, uh, and the Tax Neo down at 58 decibels. Uh, those all tests they've did all at 20 miles per hour, which is kind of the industry standard for testing uh, trainers and kind of the speed that you aim for. And that's because in most cases, people aren't going faster than 20 miles per hour in a trainer, um, or if they do, there's a kind of negligible difference, difference in uh, audio. Uh, now keep in mind, below that, it's gonna actually be quieter. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, earlier, the slower you go, the quieter the trainer is.
What I'll do now is I'll go ahead and pop on the trainer and just give you a feel for what the sound sounds like. Uh, now keep in mind, I am in a super echoey location. You can kind of hear that with my voice. It's concrete walls um, surrounded on all sides. Um, I'm actually technically in a library, uh, the UCI's headquarter library. Uh, you wouldn't really know that otherwise, but it's very echoey. Um, so the, the sound's gonna sound a little bit different in here than it would probably in your living room or, or somewhere else, but nonetheless, we'll get on it and give it a quick whirl. Uh, now in this case, I have it plugged in. Um, so when I have this plugged in like this, it's gonna use a standard power curve as opposed to being electronically controlled by an app or something like that. Um, so right now I feel like I'm probably at about hmm, 180 watts or so. Um, I could pair this up and go ahead and tell you exactly what I'm at. Um, so you can hear that low hum there. Uh, that's you know somewhat being exaggerated by this building structure uh, versus if you were in a you know, non sound bouncing location, it'd be a bit quieter there. But it doesn't have the high pitched hum of something like the kicker. So remember I mentioned earlier with the sound, it's purely based on speed. So if I go ahead now and decrease my speed, you'll hear the sound kind of drops out the bottom. Um, so if you're doing a workout based, something like trainer road or Zwift in workout mode as opposed to Zwift in regular uh, kind of riding around the island mode. If you drop to a easier gear set here that reduces your speed, it'll go ahead and reduce your volume. Next, when it comes to kind of those top end specs, this here has a 2000 watt maximum at 20 miles per hour. So like the audio side of things or the decibel side of things, uh, trainer companies tend to measure at 20 miles per hour as their baseline. So it's actually even higher wattage allowance if you're going faster than that, uh, but that's sort of the, the magic number there. Um, in the case of the kicker, uh, that tops out uh, about 1500 watts or so, at, again, 20 miles per hour. Um, so you really have to go in quite fast and with a quite high uh, wattage in order to get beyond those levels there. Um, this will simulate grade up to 20%. Uh, the kicker's at 15%, whereas the Tax Neo is at 25%. Uh, now for most people, that's really not gonna matter too much. There's not too many climbs out there that are gonna go beyond that 15% anyways, um, but that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and keep in mind, it doesn't mean the trainer's just gonna burst if it goes beyond 15%. Uh, usually you may just have issues kind of getting that more realistic feel beyond that point. Uh, it's also gonna be a little bit based on weight as well. Last but not least is pricing. Uh, the hammer will set you back 11.99 US dollars, uh, basically 1200 bucks. The same exact price as the kicker, uh, but less than the Tax Neo, which runs 1600 bucks. There is one catch though, that both this and the Tax Neo does require a cassette be added to it. Uh, so for most people, that's gonna run between 50 and 100 bucks for a kind of a standard issue cassette to toss on your trainer, um, whereas a kicker does include that cassette either 10 or 11 speed uh, for that 11.99. So that is one minor difference there. You have to increase that price. Also, so if you don't have a way to install that cassette, um, you're gonna either, either find a friend that does or go ahead and bring it to a local bike shop to get that cassette installed on there. Uh, it's literally a, a 60 second procedure, but without the right tools, you're, you're pretty much hosed. Finally, the unit will be available later on this summer. Uh, Cyclops is saying sometime by at least August, if not sooner, uh, but that's kind of their drop dead date. Uh, so that should definitely be available ahead of the trainer season that starts in the fall for North American folks. Uh, if you're down under in Australia, New Zealand and not, uh, sorry, I guess maybe next year. Uh, but it'll be available for your trainer season by then. So it's not all bad, right? Uh, keep in tune on the channel here as well as on the site for more details on the hammer. As I get closer, as they get closer to launch, I'll go ahead and I'll get a full in-depth review out in time for the trainer season. Thanks for watching.